Okay, so I'm back, and uh, here I am with an update. Um, with uh, I'm going to break down what I've done when I last did a um, shot of this. You saw it was pretty much um, an outline, and so with the with the technique I'm using, which is there again, it's called an oil wash technique. Um, you're going to see there again. There's the image. So. Sorry, it's not the. It's a good reference, but I, I usually prefer my references like in color and a little larger because I always tell people when I'm doing um, an image and trying to get a likeness, the better the reference is, then the better I can kind of do my job of getting a likeness. Um, I've so in this particular stage, I think I captured him uh, pretty well. Um, there's you know the eyes, it gives you close up of the eyes and mustache and so forth. Black and white image, no problem. Um, when it comes to color, I, I usually don't have an issue with that. The top of the head is not done because there again, he's going to be wearing a, a beret. Um, so in this image, what you're going to see, there again, here's the picture of his son. And I'm going to be pretty much, uh, with this technique, the overall face is going to be like oil washed. Uh, what you do is like, I'm a, now that I've done a light pencil drawing here, and the, the pencil drawing doesn't have to be really tight a tight rendering just an, enough for me to like I said get the likeness because what I'm going to be doing is when I um, I'm going to lay a s spray over this it's going to seal down the graphite I, I just used a regular old raggedy that's a beat up number two pencil so I, you don't have to get to um, you know some people use ebony's or or the pencils a number two pencils just enough all you need to get, to get the graphite in there and then I'm going to spray work fixative over this that's going to seal down the graphite and then what I'll do is I'll mix up an oil wash uh, it'll be turpentine and some oils that'll be close to his skin tone once I get a color reference I'm going to wash that over just the facial area here and then the rest of what you see behind this whole image is going to be painted with uh, acrylic paint so you know like the tie even though I did do some tone some, some tone variation there or light shading it doesn't really matter because all that's going to be painted like this whole suit tie um, shirt beret the background which is going to have the American flag all of that's going to be painted in and I'm going to probably walk through some of that process but um yeah I'll, I'll definitely do that just so you can actually see the transformation even more uh, but this is what it looks like now this is where I'm at there again this is just a really light outline and um, I'm going to go to the I guess third or fourth stage of this to bring this into more of um, a solid image so that I can capture exactly what was expressed by the uh, the daughter as to what she what she wanted him to look like in the final uh, memorial piece Okay, so I'm at the second stage, um, well, sorry, not the second stage, um, from the last video, I'm on the third stage, I believe. Um, in the last video, what you saw, I'm wearing gloves, I'll explain why. In the last video you saw, I basically was talking about an outline, um, so for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and go through this process. I wasn't going to actually do this on camera, because there again, I wanted to save time, but I felt it would probably be better to have a visual since this technique can be a little um it's not complicated but it, it's it's all about how you you guesstimate certain things and i wanted to kind of show that on camera um just to give a better example of how i'm going to apply this this technique there again this is the oil wash technique um so i mentioned before what i what i did was um i did an outline you didn't see that on film i'm gonna move some of the stuff so but give the bad lighting I tried to just kind of give more lighting I felt the other lighting before was a little little too dark so I brought in like a flood light and it might wash out a few things but um, there again I'm hoping I can do the best to kind of just demonstrate and get the point across um, I went ahead and I, I said you know this pencil technique is not that refined because there again it's a layering process almost like acrylic so um, it doesn't have to be perfect you just want to get some some tone down on your whatever it is that you're drawing 
and you just want to there again I, I figured uh, to me I captured the likeness pretty well I'm, I'm very satisfied with it so I'm moving forward um, all of this is very sketchy and, and, and patchy in certain parts and you'll see as I go through the process it's not going to matter because um, any the way I do it is any kind of any kind of um, applications that I'm going to use like the hat portion here I mentioned before all of the the attire the military attire all that's going to be painted in so little fine lines and, and blemishes imperfections it doesn't matter because it, it's, it's all going to be covered up once I lay down a heavy paint in, ap in the application um, now this oil wash it is a wash so that's going to be the part of the drawing that's going to be transparent um, to, to a degree but um, I'm going to go through the process now and start running my mouth I just wanted to kind of give some background information on um, what I'm going to do and why this probably doesn't look as refined as it could uh, so anyhow I went ahead got my lines in I got my image to where I like it and so I use work fixative here workable fixative um, you can get that from any online or you can go that I think Walmart even sells that uh, and what that does it seals the graphite down and it stops um, you can still smudge if you if you do it with a with little elbow grease but for the most part this workable fixative fixative is locking down the graphite so it doesn't move that's very important when you want to do an oil wash or put the wash over it because you don't want this to smudge or smear at all so I've already applied it it's best to kind of apply it outside or if you do it inside use some heavy fans open up windows and so forth but it's better to do it outside mine has already um, been applied so it's, it's dry it, it, it depending on you can do two applications three applications uh, one usually suffices I guess it all depends on how heavy your graphite is um, my graphite um, is very light number two pencil so I did like two coat application it dries in about like uh, I would say 15 20 minutes so I'm set to go here what I'm gonna do is um, what you see here or what I have I'm trying to move it more so into position so you can see it because I have the camera focused on my face but um, usually now I'm gonna pull up an image on my phone and show you for this person's tone that I'm skin tone that I'm using um, you you kind of guesstimate what what the what paint you want to use it's, a, it's an oil wash so um, you could possibly do a gouache wash and I think you can also do acrylic wash to me it's because it's water based it doesn't give you the same effect uh, so oil the one thing about oil is that it takes a long time to dry um, and with this wash technique the oil pigmentation gives you an opportunity to kind of go back in and and work over top of it to a degree um, without without it being too hard if that makes any sense um, here, here's another image I asked my friend to send me a different uh, a color picture so I could get the actual tone the skin tone and hue down so um, what I'm looking at right now is I'm focusing on the skin tone and I'm seeing some dark browns in that dark brown you get some um, you know variations of hues like orange and even hints of uh, yellow there so this is like the base tone or color that you want to use and it's a, a primary that you want to use for like skin tones depending on how light or dark the hues are in their skin complexion um, for me, for example, I probably would go lighter white and, and um, yellow and, and orange. Um, for, lighter, for lighter tones, you want to, of course, use lighter colors. Um, I only use like three to four colors for palette. That's all you pretty much need. These paints are very old. Um, I got them from like um, various stores. They, they're kind of sticky and gummy. Um, it's time for me to update my oil set because I, I don't do these matter of fact it's probably the last one I'm going to do I don't really do portraits and I don't do these that often so I figured there again I would document this um, you want to get a or have a um, a can a canister of some sort so that you can mix your um, like glass or plastic but 
keep in mind this is you're using turpentine that's another reason why I don't really care for oils because oils can be very messy they transfer very easily and they they can um, they're not the most user-friendly type of paint you can use for me that's my personal preference but um that's why I kind of stay away from them but the, there again this technique is a great technique and, and that's why I'm gonna go ahead and um, you know breaking out my oils and that's why they're so old and, and kind of decrepit looking so I got my my jar here and I, I tend to use odorless turpentine and what you want to do is you just want to um, sorry you're probably not going to see this on camera because I'm not um, it's not easy for me to hold this camera but um, you always want to as you can see right now this doesn't really matter because all this is going to be covered up is when you work with oils and you're about to work with this technique in this process you want to make sure that you have newspaper or you're in a workplace that you don't mind getting sloppy and dirty because it because it is going to happen you're going to get paint somewhere you're going to spill turpentine or something somewhere just like like i just did just now so i have right now i have the um i put some turpentine in and i have a an old brush you can get these from the dollar store it doesn't matter it all depends on um how you want to apply the oil with the type of brush you you want to use um, since I'm using a a image and, and you see I have a, I have a stain there but that, that doesn't matter because there again when I'm done with this picture the majority of this background anything else is going to be acrylic so you won't even see any of that stuff um, so I just kind of covered the bottom of my my jar here and I have my brush ready to go and this is where you kind of guesstimate for this oil technique. You want the pigment to build up enough so that whatever surface you're covering, it, it's enough to cover it completely. So you don't want to run out of out of your oil wash. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm going to guesstimate. Uh, I have my white here. So the, the hues that I'm going to be using, there again, I'm using white. I'm using uh, a little yellow to bring out some of the um, highlights and uh, um, an orange that's like a medium almost on the darker orange side and then I'm using a a uh, burnt umber and this burnt umber would be the perfect skin tone to match what he has here for the darker colors I am going to suggest that you want to go a little lighter you don't want to go too heavy and once you mix these up in the jar you can determine how you want to change or alter the way your wash is going to look. So I'm gonna start now. I'm gonna start dark. So I'm gonna go. I just have a a, a little smidge in there of the um, the burnt umber because the you know the darker colors do tend to um, dominate a bit, and they they tend to be stronger in in overpowering some of the other colors. So you don't need but so much of that trying to get it out here I should have like a knife or something so I have a little drop in there um, as you can see so I'm mixing that up and you'll see it dissipate and the viscosity is going to be really thin in my um, my jar there extremely liquidy which is kind of what I want um, you don't want too much of a turpentine you want just just enough and it's it's all up to you you can go heavy if you want but for me it's generally better to kind of go light and then you can always adjust and go darker or um, you can go darker or you can just add lighter whatever colors you want in order to to make the, the appropriate adjustments to get the color match or the color hue that you're looking for so there again that's what I am now so this is a pretty good watch I'm, I'm very satisfied with this I'm gonna add some white um, get it a little lighter and then I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, this should be yellow but it's, it's, it's a lighter orange but it's gonna it's gonna suffice so I'm, I'm gonna go with it want to come out there okay so that's in there I'm gonna 
mix these four colors up as you can see you know it's just a matter of um, making sure they all blend very well and I pretty much have my wash there any paint that you may see in the jar like I see a little bit more paint in there you want to make sure you just you know get it on the brush and and make sure it liquefies as much as possible okay so I have a pretty good wash here and this wash is kind of like if you look at it it's a little bit orange in hue or very orange in hue and I'm, I'm fine with that because once I lay this wash down and get the wash where I want it to be the, the the last applicant that's going to bring out the tones and the hues on the face because I'm only using this oil wash on the face is going to be Prismacolor so Prismacolor pencil is going to be the final uh, adjustment and that's going to be what's going to dominate this entire face is going to allow me to bring or, or match that color as much as possible to this person's skin tone so um, make sure you're because I still see some paint on this on this brush and that's not too good because when, once you start laying your wash it will kind of spread more than you want because you just want all of this to be balanced well enough okay so I'm going to start my application and there's my first application there you just want to get it over the whole skin tone it doesn't matter at all if you if it's bleeding or if it's um, you know getting on any other portions because for me there again I'm going to be painting over all of that now if you were going to be doing a wash over this entire thing then you want to cover the entire board so you see how that's a nice wash there and it's it's um, it's more of an orange hue but that that that's great that's that's all I need because any other darks and everything it's just a quicker way for you to cover the portion of what it is that you're concentrating on for me I'm concentrating on this face so this allows me to achieve and it gives a um, more of a depth and, and a better tone of what I'm looking for it's a quicker way of of masking my whole picture instead of me penciling this whole thing plus it also it just gives it a whole different level and, and depth of in dynamic so what I'm gonna do is just let this dry now that that's applied I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do probably like maybe one more application and then I'll go into the next stage which will be taking a kneaded eraser once this dries so it's gonna have to dry for a while I have a fan here I'm gonna turn my fan on let the fan help with the drying process I'll come back in with a kneaded eraser and that kneaded eraser is going to allow me to pull out the highlights in this person's face and then I'll go back in with Prismacolor to bring the overall balance okay this is the oil wash that's been applied to the image um, I let this the because of how I mix the paint uh, like I mentioned before um, I'm in a different setting now so I don't actually have the actual setup and stuff that I used earlier but what I could show you is like I mentioned in the last video and what I was trying to show in the video is that depending on how much paint you put in the turpentine mix you can make adjustments you could thin it out more to make it a lighter wash or you can add more paint to make it a thicker wash um, it's all up to you except for I think a thicker wash a medium balance is always good I don't think you want to go too light you don't want to go too dark but and we're back so here is the this is uh, to give you an idea of this an update of where I am where I am on the picture there again black and white that's the Suns military attire that I'm eventually gonna be uh, transporting over here uh, and then let me concentrate on what's what I did facial wise as you can see lay down my oil wash technique and um, I'm getting close um, I mentioned about 
you know, predominantly was orange. That orange foundation is kind of like a general hue, depending on skew, um, skin tones that you can use. You don't have to use that. You can use pink there again, depending on how light the color is, because I could also went pink and then went dark. I prefer, prefer to go dark and then go light. So with doing that, um, some, my, some of my Prisma colors that you generally want to have for darker tone hues. Um, this is a dark brown. We have a um, lighter brown or light umber. These all help me use, which there again, I went into the image and I just blended in the skin tone and tried to match that to a picture that I'm, I'm using off another phone. I need to print these pictures out. I just didn't have time to do that. Plus, I already had a have a good idea of what it is. Um, you know, I've done this so often. I kind of have a sense of of the skin tones and, and where the darks and the lights lie. Like for example, I on his on this picture here for this crease. Um, you see this crease here, and so naturally for these particular type of creases, you want a defining line. So I'm gonna go darker with that. So I use my this is an espresso, or I use a dark brown or any kind of dark pencil that'll help me just lay that line in there like such, and then I'll offset it or I'll blend it in. Uh, you can use your finger at times to blend it in. Sometimes they have these smudge tools that you can use. Uh, it's totally up to you. Um, this is still a work in pro progress. I'm almost done. And one thing, a trick of the trade that I'm going to do in what I've done before is the white, 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 white and darker colors, I noticed, um, or white and black in particular, you're going to use them quite heavily, at least I do. You use it for hair, you use it for smudging, you use it for the white of the eyes, you use it for uh, many different other variations. You also can use it as a blending tool, like I'm going with white and I can use this white as a blending tool to help me, you know, use gradation and get the proper tone down so that the the contrast of light and dark is not so hard. It helps tremendously with smoothing out some of the rough edges and tones to offset some hard lines on your on your image. So I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'm going to take it to the next stage. There again, just giving you an update. Um, let me pull up another phone image just to show you what I was kind of using as, as a reference and what I wish I had printed out. But there again, I'll, I'll print this out at the end stage. So there's my reference, and you can see there again, it's not the best image because it's a, it's, a, it's a smartphone I'm using here. But you can see there how I've used that as a blueprint and the foundation as well to, you know, replicate this and get close to what I believe is a pretty much um, accurate depiction depiction of a skin tone. Um, I'm going to bring it to completion. It's almost at the final stage, but it's still not there yet. Trick of the trade, you don't have to do this, but what I was going to say is that what I like to do is um, to give this extra contrast an additional pop. It makes makes your image look a bit more realistic. Is I'm going to go in and paint. Usually I'll paint in the white portions of the eyes and I'll paint in the white portion of the teeth. What that does is it, it, it really stands out a lot and it brings more depth and dimension to the face so that it may not look as whimsical as, or, or like a cartoon character. It will definitely ground it more as a portrait. So I'm going to go into the next final stage and um, from there you're going to see this pretty much to completion and I'll share with some other tricks that I'm going to do in this portrait that will give this extra dimension and... Um, some life to this picture that will just kind of help it along with the authenticity of it looking like an actual portrait. And once I complete this, I will go through those and then show examples of some past oil washes and that will complete the video. So I'll see you soon.